Hello everybody. So this week I wanted to talk about something kind of serious. <laughs> Just content warning real quick. It's going to be about self-harm. <laughs> so if you're not down for that, click off the video now. But if you want to stick around and find out some more, um, stick around. Yeah. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. um, also, my meds have been, hello, kicking in uh, a lot more lately. So, probably going to be a lot less ticks in this video. So that's different. So, I have an issue with self-harm. I have been struggling with it for about seven years now. <laughs> Six, seven years. <laughs> and it's something I'm not proud of. <laughs> um, it's understandable I'm not proud of it, so, you know, go figure. <laughs> go. But, <laughs> It is an addiction of mine, <laughs> and it's something that I've been trying to not do, <laughs> but this past week I spent five days relapsing, and it really set in that I need to find a new coping strategy. For some context, I self-harm because I experience emotions very intensely and when I get depressed, I get really depressed and I hurt and I have a lot of things going on. Hello. And the way that I've always uh, gotten just kind of a release of that has been to cut myself. <laughs> now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably just kind of wondering like, you know, what's wrong with you? Why would you do that to yourself? And I, ad I agree, <laughs> it's not exactly the smartest decision, but it's been what's working for me. And as I look across my body, I see all of these scars <laughs> and all of the history that's just right there on my skin. And it shows me you know, all the times that I've been struggling and it's, hello, it's told me that for all of these years, I never stopped struggling. <laughs> To help give more context, <laughs> I have been suffering from uh, depression, hmm. which has never really gone away all, all seven of these years. Um, <laughs> I've been suffering from generalized anxiety disorder. I also deal with psychosis, <laughs> and I recently was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Okay, so my camera just died on me. Um, fantastic. But, uh, just to go back and say again, uh, I was diagnosed with all of them, all of these illnesses. <laughs> and for people with BPD, um, it's kind of common to self-harm because of the intense emotions. And it wasn't until recently when it all kind of clicked. Um, I'll go in depth uh, with it in another video. But I wanted to let you guys know that this is something I've been struggling with. And I feel like I'm ready to try and put myself into recovery because I don't want to keep doing this forever. I've been doing this since I was 13. Um, 
it's not it's not healthy it's not really okay but it's just kind of been like this thing that's helped define me a bit as a person which I know is weird um, but I'm gonna try and put myself into recovery now if you're someone out there who struggles with self-harm like I do, <laughs> um, especially if you're young, tell tell an adult. You know, tell your parents, um, or tell a grandparent, or tell your doctor, you know, someone someone that you trust, like 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 a teacher too. Um, let an adult know if you're not an adult, and if you are an adult. I would definitely go talk to a therapist. <laughs> I've been seeing one for almost five, six years. <laughs> and they help. They really do. They will help teach you how not to keep hurting yourself and different ways to go and help alleviate the pain and the intense feelings. Now, I don't advocate for self-harm, I advocate for recovery. I believe that we all deserve to be okay. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, be smart, be safe, be kind. Thanks for listening. And bye.